All right, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. In this video, I'd like to pick out and discuss uh, the main points from the article on an essay which Liz Truss has written to defend her ill-advised attempts to defeat a lettuce in mortal combat and which The Telegraph published this morning. It is, as expected, a quite remarkable attempt to paint herself as a visionary genius and an attempt to present an even more warped version of history than Boris Johnson's memoirs promise. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. Sundays are getting a little bit spicy, aren't they? It is quite normal for the big news to be saved for the Sunday papers. But like last Sunday, we had the sacking of another cabinet minister. This week, it's the raising from the dead of a former prime minister, but let's first of all take the headline, because there's a lot going on in this. The headline, Liz Truss. I was brought down by the left-wing economic establishment. The left-wing economic establishment? Let's work backwards here. First of all, objectively, she was brought down by her own MPs. See, right now, polls are consistently showing that a majority of the public want a general election. Are we going to get one? No, because it's MPs and MPs alone who have the power to trigger a snap election. The same is true of the government. It is MPs who decide who forms the government. It is MPs who force the dissolution of one government and the formation of another. In theory, this includes opposition MPs, but when one party has a comfortable majority, it's all down to them. The reason Truss was deposed was because a clear majority of Tory MPs insisted that she go and go now. Her MPs are, by no stretch of the imagination, the left-wing economic establishment. So she's referring to those who panicked her MPs into replacing her. The reason Tory MPs removed Trust from power was because she cratered their poll rating. It got so bad that some election forecasts had the Tories winning a number of seats which you could comfortably count on the fingers of a hand blown up in an ill-judged fireworks-related stunt. And what was it that caused this cratering of the voting intention polls? Combination of two things. First, her mini budget wasn't popular. It's not just the impact it had. It wasn't actually popular with the public because what was writ large in it was tax cuts for the rich. People do not really consider that during a severe cost of living crisis where the government are pleading poverty when it comes to funding public services, that taxing those with more than enough less is the way to go. But the biggest issue was the pound crashing. The fact that she announced uncosted tax cuts and other budgetary decisions meant a sudden and massive loss of confidence from investors. The result of which, even though the pound has since recovered, is still a massive hole in the national budget, mortgage repayments going up hundreds of pounds for households across the country, oh, and a load of people's pension funds are now considerably smaller. I wonder if many of the people affected even realise yet. So are these investors the left-wing economic establishment? Well, there will be some left-wing investors, of course. It's one thing to be against the capitalist economic model that we use, but it's quite another to just pretend it doesn't exist. If you need to make money, you make money using the system we have. But the reason the model exists as it is, is because the vast majority of investors favour it. They like it. The investors, hedge fund managers, bankers, whatever, everyone involved in the financial markets are largely in favour of the model. This makes them, by definition, right-wing economic establishment. Also, they weren't acting in concert as part of some grand conspiracy. Why would they? She wanted to help them pay less tax. They were acting out of fear that uncosted budgets lead a country to risk defaulting later on. So the main claim is a clear nonsense from a deluded former Prime Minister who doesn't like people pointing and laughing at the fact she lost an endurance test to a lettuce. In her essay, she bemoans the fact that her ideas were never put to the test. This is true, of course. None of her mini-budget was really put into action, with the exception of the energy price cap. It wasn't voted on. New budgets don't come into effect usually until the new tax year, unless it's an emergency, but the mini-budget wasn't presented as an emergency budget energy cap aside. So it was just a statement of intent. But not only do I keep pointing out the clear fact that tax cuts do not stimulate growth, the data shows that actually the way to grow a strong economy is to have a high level of tax. It's really clear. As much as that boggles the minds of conservatives, it's really clear and it's really easy to explain how. But if just stating her intention was enough to blow a hole in the economy to the tune of many tens of billions of pounds, 
and to increase mortgage payments by hundreds a month and to permanently shrink the value of people's pension pots, what on earth would have happened if her MPs had held their nerve for, for oh my goodness, the best part of a year to let her try out her insane ex experiments? Right? In one part, she attacks the Office for Budgetary Responsibility. See, the main issue with her budget is she did not present the usual OBR impact assessment with it. Because that's what you're supposed to do. You announce your measures and this is what the OBR say about it. She says she didn't agree with their assessment. A couple of things here. First, you don't just get to say you disagree with expert economists when you have absolutely zero expertise in the matter yourself. Liz Truss's understanding of economics is basically on par with someone who learned about a complex thing by doing their own research on the internet. Never mind her PPE degree, it's an absolute nonsense. Second, she can't say she disagreed with their assessment because there wasn't one to disagree with. That was the problem. She and Kwarteng refused to let the OBR produce an assessment of their plans. She then spends a good amount of time slagging off Tory MPs, whining that they didn't respect her mandate. This, this would be the mandate that she won from a few tens of thousands of lunatics in the Conservative Party. Not from her own MPs or even the electorate, of course. And actually, given that the mini-budget was a surprise to many Tory MPs, it could be argued it's not exactly what she even promised party members, you know. But the, uh, the whining about it, that was a little disappointing for me, I have to say. Not because it shows she's not accepting responsibility, you know, not because there's no contrition there, but because it actually might limit her capacity to cause trouble in the Conservative Party. Essentially, what Liz Truss is trying to do is resurrect her political career at the cost of, of Rishi Sunak. I saw a suggestion that one of her close allies thinks she could take over again after the election and win power from opposition. <laughs> I don't know what the prospect of that would be. Right? I think I can guess what the prospect of her winning power from opposition would be. But in terms of taking over again. I mean, I'm not sure I see Boris Johnson retaining interest in becoming Conservative leader if the job doesn't come attached to the position of Prime Minister. You know, after the election, the Tories will still be stuck without any obvious leadership candidates. I think there's a very high chance that they will risk a complete lunatic before deciding to be sensible again. So maybe Truss's chances aren't as ridiculous as we may suppose, although I still find it difficult to believe they'll give her another shot. But ultimately, although Sunak's replacement, replacement is likely to be decided by the normal procedure of getting batshit insane party members to select from a choice of two, and then anything can happen. But the two who go forwards will be determined by the Conservative MPs who manage to retain their seats at the next election. I'm not quite sure that Truss's pitch here is the best one to win that support. You're all a bunch of bastards. You ruined everything. I had it all worked out. Yes, every expert in the world said I was as mad as a box of frogs. But I'm a visionary genius, I tell you. And you're all small-minded cretins. Now apologise immediately and pledge your support for my future leadership bid. Not really convinced that works, if I'm honest. I had to laugh towards the end. She talks about her soul searching. The article doesn't actually make clear if she found one or not. But the usual implication of soul searching is that you are engaged in a period of reflection, introspection. But nowhere in this, this article does it refer to the fact that she wrote about uh, any admissions of wrongdoing on her part. Other than trusting the small-minded cretins, small cretins whose support she's trying to win over in the parliamentary party. Oh, she says she regrets sacking Kwarteng as well. She tries to say that the economic collapse which followed her mini-budget was actually the consequence of Rishi Sunak's time as Chancellor. It's just so happened that it happened to hit half an hour after Kwarteng delivered his budget statement. Coincidence, eh? And besides, they're all lefty bankers in the city anyway. Bastards. She, she tried to blame her own MPs for failing to respect the mandate that she won from that august and sage group of people, folk who pay a few quid a month to be Conservative Party members. Not that it was much of a mandate, fewer than half of them voted for her. Finally, she pinned the blame on all three of her predecessors, Boris Johnson, Theresa May and David Cameron, as well as her successor, of course, for buggering everything up while she was in office. Oh, it was all their fault, not hers. Essentially, you can condense the main points down to it's all your fault and your fault and your fault. And the only thing I did wrong was sack my chancellor. I should have just stuck two fingers up at you all and glued my ass to the steps of Downing Street like those climate protesters that I want to ban. 
But anyway, now that she's announced her comeback tour, we'll have to see what happens over the next few weeks and months, I suppose. At the very least, it will be an interesting extra sideshow for Rishi Sunak to deal with. Uh, and now that she's explicitly attacked Sunak's policies, expect her, like all of his other opponents, to hold up as absolute proof that the local elections prove her right. That's what they'll do. When the local elections are absolute car crash, which they will be, she'll go, this proves I was right. But whether she wins over enough support amongst her fellow MPs is another matter. Still, she doesn't actually need to win anything like a majority over to cause trouble, which I'm going to guess she's not going to by calling them all bastards. She just needs a die-hard bunch who are prepared to vote against the economic policies, including budgets, that she is claiming are a step down the wrong road and in stark contrast to what party members want. That's all she needs. Can she get it? We'll see. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, and I'll see you later.